I'm standing in Hellman Library, home to the Dick Thornburg Forum for Law and Public Policy. Richard Louis Thornburg, more commonly known as Dick Thornburg, was a Pittsburgh attorney, governor of Pennsylvania, and United States Attorney General. But equally as important, he was a father to Peter Thornburg, his son who has physical and intellectual disabilities. This room I'm standing in entirely complies with the Americans with Disabilities Act, or the ADA, which is a piece of legislation passed in 1990 that protects the rights of people with disabilities and protects them from discrimination in areas like the workplace, transportation, and more. This very room I'm standing in may not have been accessible to people like his own son had Thornburg not helped successfully enact the ADA. Today, give me a few minutes of your time to convince you of how Thornburg's and others' empathy for his son and others with disabilities resulted in the passing of the ADA. And why this success is important to study for the future of civil rights policy work. Till date, the ADA is the most fortified piece of civil rights legislation. Ever since 1991, the year after its passing, Republican lawmakers have attempted to repeal certain regulations of the act, citing undue economic burden to businesses. However, in the last 30 years, they have been overwhelmingly unsuccessful in making any significant changes to the ADA. It is important to study such legislation to understand which factors we need to replicate in the future to create more secure bills that will protect other marginalized groups. Earlier, I mentioned how empathy contributed to the success of the ADA. Let me define that term for you in the context of my research. According to the American Psychological Association, empathy is understanding a person from his or her frame of reference rather than one's own, or vicariously experiencing that person's feelings, perceptions, and thoughts. The ADA and disability issues were not always at the forefront of Thornburg's political endeavors. I found that prior to his son's accident, he was rather ignorant about disability issues and skeptical of psychiatric disabilities. However, after the accident, Thornburg took abrupt interest in disability issues. In 1967, seven years after the accident, he became the general chairman of the Capital Fund Program of an organization that provided housing and schooling for children with disabilities. He would also go on to guest speak for various disability rights organizations, like at the Foundation for Developmental Disabilities Dinner in 1989, where he explicitly states that the challenges and joys of raising his son inspired him and Ginny Thornburg, his wife, to become passionate about disability rights. Thornburg's experiences of these challenges and joys allowed for him to empathize with his son and steered him in this political direction. In my research, I found theories about how we form in-groups with people similar to us and consequently develop self-glorifying attitudes within these groups. We are less likely to include out-groups which consists of people dissimilar to us. A study done on cross-group friendships between special educational needs, or SEN, adolescents and non-SEN adolescents showed that friendships between different groups, that is, SEN versus non-SEN, resulted in more inclusive attitudes. In the context of disabilities, we can separate people into two groups, people with disabilities and people without disabilities. The government has historically employed a large majority of people without disabilities, as opposed to those with. Thus, to most people in government, specifically in Congress, people with disabilities are in the out group. They are the people they don't interact with much or empathize with enough. However, in the years leading up to the passing of the ADA, Thornburg, a father of a son with disabilities, was named Attorney General of the United States. Senator Tom Harkin, who has a deaf brother, was a senior member of the Senate and co-sponsor of the bill that became the ADA. 
The representation of disabilities in such influential positions is what differentiated the government of 1988 to 90 from others. My approach to this project was determining whether Thornburg's success with the ADA demonstrated real life application of this study in policy work. And here are three things I found. Thornburg worked with Justin Dart Jr., a prominent disability rights advocate who had disabilities due to a bout with polio. He also worked with Tom Harkin, the chief sponsor and author of the ADA, who has a deaf brother. He worked with Tom Ridge, who was the chairman of the National Organization of Disability and used a hearing aid. By working with these individuals, Thornburg accumulated the experience of disability rights activists and legislators who were representative of the issue and formed an in-group high up in the hierarchy of the government. The understanding of their struggles, or as identified in this project, the empathy derived from their struggles, undoubtedly contributed to the refinement of the contents of the ADA and continually motivated Thornburg to advocate for its passing. As a delegate of the Japanese Friendship Tour for Community Leaders, Thornburg discussed improvements to facilities and services for people with disabilities with the Japanese government. He was not only committed to the improvement of disability rights in the US, but also internationally, long before he became a governor or attorney general. His domestic dedication to di the disability rights movement is displayed in the careful preservation of thank you letters from coalitions of civil rights advocacy groups. In his initiative to dispel falsehoods about the ADA written in newspapers, and in his eagerness to attend many disability rights discussions, all long after the ADA was passed. In 1990, a Senate subcommittee was formed for the ADA congressional hearings. They heard from young professionals who faced discrimination due to their disabilities, like Joseph Janowski, who was a Harvard Law graduate who was rejected from numerous job opportunities because he was blind. It is unlikely that Republican congresspersons would prioritize disability issues over economic conservatism if they had not interacted with the out group by personally hearing from people whose lives would be affected by their vote. This anomaly in the history of civil rights votes, that is, being overwhelmingly bipartisan, lends itself to our understanding of how empathy influences decision-making in policy work. The legacy of Thornburg's work is cemented in our history. It is in the bricks of this building, the ramps we see at the postal office, and in every other accommodation that is unremarkable to me as a person who does not have disabilities, but has absolutely changed the lives of people who do. In the future, I hope to conduct more research to understand how the next generation of politicians can be just as successful as Thornburg in creating policies that can change the lives of other marginalized groups.